Victoria Cobb, President of the Family Foundation, here with Todd Gacky, Head of our Government Relations. And a lot has happened since last we did a video update, so I thought I'd just kick it over to you. We're in the last week. What are some good things that have happened recently? Yeah, well, I think the biggest one is that there will be no commercialization of marijuana. That's a good one. Uh, <laughs> that is a very good one. So the, the uh, House decided to continue this to 2023. That doesn't mean the issue is going away for sure, but at least for the this year, we can say that we've been able to stop commercialization of marijuana, meaning there won't be any pot shops on every street corner in the Commonwealth. Another big one, another important one, would be free speech protections for public employees, specifically teachers. We call this bill our Tanner Cross bill, but it would provide protections for them for going into public places and if personal capacity expressing their, their opinions on certain issues. So those were two big wins. Yeah, I don't think we expected to see a teacher like Tana Cross walk into a meeting, oppose a non-existent policy, just saying, I don't agree with what's about to come and lose his job. So yeah. that's a good one. We're looking forward to the, hopefully the governor signing that, uh, yeah. you know, in the next couple of weeks or whatever. Um, now it's not all good, right? So there have been some pretty yeah. big disappointments um, since our last video update. Why don't you yeah. give us Maybe just a couple of the, and I, 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 want, I want to say highlights, some of the lowlights we've had lately. Yeah, yeah. So I guess the, 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 big, the big ones would deal with life. So informed consent, this is a bill that was carried to put back into place uh, protections for women to make sure that they're fully informed before considering to have an abortion. Uh, another important one, a big one, and you may have actually seen a video of Delegate Nick Freitas giving a speech on this bill. It was the Infant Born Alive Protection Act, essentially. Uh, to address what no former Governor Northam talked about with the baby being laid on the table and a discussion happening about whether the child should live or die, this bill would have addressed that situation and protected those babies. Uh, another disappointing moment with this week was the essential worship bill. Uh, it, it would have protected places of worship, churches, synagogues, temples, uh, during the pandemic to make sure that they stay open, provide important services and a place for fellowship for so many people during a time of crisis. That bill unfortunately failed in the Senate. Uh, really important bill. Hopefully we get to see this one come back again next year. Yeah, and I know a couple of those bills, they did extreme measures to make sure they died. Senate Democrat leadership moved them into into a committee that was double stacked with Democrats and, uh, you know, on the baby board line. And yeah. also the birds and bees. We didn't mention that one, but the sex text hotline that we've talked so much to our... Committee. It was in the same committee and it went down. I think we actually had one or two reasonable Democrats that would have come along on that yeah. vote and gotten out of committee. And they, they literally put it in, in a committee we weren't expecting in order to make sure that didn't happen. Right. So that's that's the unfortunate nature of what happens down here. Now, I think the thing that everybody's wondering about right now is, are we, are we going to get a budget? <laughs> this is... I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine at this point. We're kind of getting to the to the point where they have to present something for, for the legislators to read. They have to have two full days to read this budget before taking action. And we're getting down to the wire on this. Uh, but there are so many good things that we're hoping to see in this budget, whether it's grocery tax, uh, tax relief, making sure that money goes back to the people um, during this time when they desperately need it. We see gas, you know, gas prices just going through the roof. You know, families are struggling and they need tax relief, and we're hoping that we'll see some in this budget. I know the governor's hoping for it too. I saw him out there talking about, yeah. you know, the differences between the House and the Senate, and I think most Virginians are going to the gas pump and hoping there's going to be yes. something um, to accommodate for all the uh, inflation and really just the overtaxing that Virginia has been doing of That's right. late. So, so yeah, we're down to the final, uh, hopefully, last two days. If they come up with a budget, if not, we'll be in, as he said, extra innings. But, um, also, if we do wrap up this week, we don't want people to forget there is the reconvened session. So legislators go home and then we come back on April 27th and that's to deal with what the governor does with these yeah. bills. He can veto, he can amend, and then the General Assembly gets to decide what they want to do to the governor's reaction. So it's kind of a one day showdown, final right. stop for some of these bills. Um, and most importantly on that day, we're going to have the Virginia March for Life. Right. So we're yeah. getting excited about yeah. that. So already be planning to bring your friends, get your church to bring a bus down April 27th um, around 11 o'clock is when the actual rally will take place. So we're looking forward to having you and uh, we'll keep you updated between now and then.